Hey guys, it's me Negocera here, and I'm here to show you the new shader effect by Roblox. Now I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to access it, or how to implement it into your Roblox game. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Roblox Studio. Now if you don't have Roblox Studio yet, um, I'm gonna leave a download link down in the description below. Now before you get right into it, I want to address that this is only available right now for Windows and Mac as of May 14, 2016. It is not yet live for Xbox, iOS, or Android systems. So that just keep that in mind. And also another thing you have to do is that these new shader effects only work when you're at a certain level in graphic settings. So to make sure that it properly shows on your game, you have to go to settings right here and a pop-up should show up. But you want to focus on this game options. Don't mind this message, it's just warning you that well, if you change anything that might like destroy your game experience or something like that, but don't mind about that. Um, actually, it's in rendering. You would have to go under the performance tab. Your main concern is edit quality and quality level. Uh, usually, for most of most of the players, it's in under automatic. But to make sure that you can see the, the new shaders effect, I would highly suggest scrolling all the way down and click on level 21. That way you can see the new shaders effect. And once you're done, you can close it. And you probably should say that some settings changes will not take effect until you restart to Roblox. So what you gotta do is okay. And normally it's okay if you don't restart Roblox, but if you don't see anything, I would suggest closing a Roblox Studio and opening it up again. Now let's go ahead and open a new game. Or actually I'll open one of my old games. Or the one one of the games I'm currently developing. So once the game loads. see this and then what you have to do is you have to go to your explorer tab if you don't have the explorer tab let's say you don't have it or like oh where's my explorer tab it's like it's gone I don't, I don't see it anywhere you have to click on view right here and you have to click on explorer right here and also properties tab so you, these are two requirements you have to grab to play play with the new um, lighting system so we're gonna go ahead and for our lighting and as you can see don't mind this we're gonna focus on um, on the new lighting or shader effects so what you're gonna do is right click on lighting and you've got to go here insert object hover over that button and here you can see all the options that's available to you what we're interested in are these ones with this symbol it's like a recycling symbol so what we have here is bloom effect, blur effect, color correction effect, and sun rays effect. So far Roblox has, has four of them as of May 14, 2016. Um, I believe they'll be adding more effects in the future. But let's go ahead and add bloom effect first. Uh, as you can clearly see, there's already a, um, a drastic change right when I inserted bloom effect. Um, so we have data behavior and state. What we want to focus on is state. This is the, the, the data you have to edit when you want to play with the lighting effect. So intensity changes how intense it is. You can see it kind of, as you can see, if I, I increase the intensity, it kind of removes the shadow effect a bit to the areas affected by the, uh, the blue effect. The size also changes how big it should how big or like how wide it spreads and over here if you click on threshold and drag the button it mainly affects the sky seems like lowering the threshold will increase the bloom effect of the sky a bit shiny huh but that's okay for now so let's go ahead and add the second one called the blur effect what this simply does is just blur out your screen so over here you can change the blur intensity or the size to a max of 120 all the way to zero which doesn't do anything this is a great tool if you're planning on making an introduction an intro script or a GUI script like a loading script goes from a blur effect to a zero blur effect which is a nice feature next we're gonna try and insert the next one which should be color correction effect. Almost missed it. So over here you can change 
um, a lot of stuff. So first of all, we can change the brightness of the game, going all the way up to one, and going down to volume of negative one. So as you can see, as I go down to negative, it goes to a black state. And if I go up to a positive, to number one, it goes to a white state. So let's go make it a bit dark. That's fine. And the contrast, actually no, let's change it back to zero so you can see. Change. If you don't want, if you don't want an exact number, you, will, you can just click on here and change the value to zero. Easy as that. And you can just drag this and see what kind of settings you'd like for your game. So the lower the number, the lower the, uh, the contrast value. So, oh god, my eyes. <laughs> So that's nice, right? But for video purposes, I'll have to put this in back to zero so you guys see what the difference is. For saturation, it just increases like the amount of color the parts have. So, so the more uh, negative the number is, the more monochromatic the area would look like. And the higher the value, the more intense the colors would be. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to find the best settings for my game right here. Now if you want to achieve the best look for your game, I would highly suggest trying for a clean look. Because if you go for a really high number, your game will definitely not, not look just as great. So next we're gonna insert sun rays. Obviously you can also enable or disable. But the cool thing about this is that let's try and find the sun. So there's the sun right there. And I need to find a nice angle for it to shine. So let's disable that. So there we go, there we have it. Very intense, right? So if you enable it, the sun rays become really clear. And what's really unique about it is that if you go behind a certain block or part in the game, it actually shows sun rays. Isn't that neat? You can have a... Whoops, whoops. I can have a really theatrical video. Whoa, oops. <laughs> Please excuse my really bad camera angle movement. But yeah. And what's really unique about this is if you click on lighting and change the time of day. So it's right right here on the data. So let's say it's morning, let's put it 8 a.m. It actually turns to sunrise. So let's actually put it at 6 a.m. Or maybe that's too far. Let's put it at 7 a.m. The sun rays become orange. Isn't that cool? Now, bravo to Roblox for updating the lighting or adding these lighting effects. Really cool. I'm very impressed. And as you can see right here, shadows actually change the direction, direction if you change the time of day. So you can have sunrise or sunset so let's try going for 14 now this is in military time so you have to know how the military time works so that's that sunset right there not that intense let's go ahead and put it at 17 that's really cool isn't it oh god my eyes <laughs> okay now let's work on let's go back to sunrise click on it and then Let's try changing some of the settings for sun rays. So the default is 0 0.3 and 0 0.8. So, whoops, I didn't delete it by accident. Alright, let's go back. So as you can see, there's sun rays right there. Very intense. So what happens if we lower the intensity? We get nothing. High intensity. Really, really bright, isn't it? Very blinding. but very cool. Also the spread. I think this affects how long the sun rays would be. So if we put it to, to zero, it'll be like a very low spread, you can see. But if we increase the spread distance of the sun rays, you can see it gradually growing as I scale the numbers up to a maximum of one. But it kind of dissolves when I go all over the limit or closer to one, so 0.4. I think a good number to stop at. And this is a really intense, so I would put it down to 0 0.23. And that's that. So right now I'm going to show you guys 
what it looks like before I added all of these together. So you can select all of these by holding your control key one by one and then you can simply click on the, uh, the tick button to disable it. Not much of a difference, right? But still very impressive. Let's view it from here. Then let's disable it. See the difference. Really cool. Well, I'm underwater now. Okay, there we go. Really cool. This is going to be a really cool screen saver shot right here. It's amazing. It's amazing how far Roblox has gone, to be honest. So one last thing I want to talk about. So, uh... If you want to be really creative about this new line effects, you can actually have a script change the properties of each individual... Uh, each individual line effects right here. So let's insert a part or a brick. script today. This is right there. Okay. So we've inserted a script into the video. So what you gotta do first is create the hit function, the on hit function. So you gotta type up script parent. Um, I think it's touched. And then semicolon connect function hit then press enter. And that, what that does is that when the player hits the block, it should um, change the properties of the... or it should activate the script in general. It can't do anything yet because it's empty. So what I want to do is change the tip color of color correction when the player touches that brick. So by ac uh, to access it, on will type game, locate lighting, period, and then find color correction. And then other color correction, I'll pick 10 colors, so I'll type out 10 color. Once. Then to change the color, this is in RGB, so I would put color 3, dot new. And I believe I just have to put, input the number, so for red, I'll just put 25500, and that's it. So this works, guys. Test it out. So I'm not sure why it's very scary. Right? The battle has begun. And it just turns red. Amazing. <laughs> oh jeez. It's supposed to be just 225. But yeah, as you can see, um, for experienced programmers and game developers out there, you can change the lighting properties based on events, which is really unique, really fun to play with. So I expect a lot of developers using this technique in the future. But the only downside is that if a player changes that, then every, everyone in the server also has the same effect. They'll be like, who's changing the colors of the game? What's going on? But enough babbling. That's it for today's video. Hopefully that cleared things out on how to insert the new lighting effects. I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching.